girl next door to ideal mom, Reed was an all-American icon. Donna Reed was an Iowa farm girl who never forgot her Midwest roots. Co-stars and celebrity friends adored her, and millions of fans continue to celebrate her every year as Mary Bailey in the holiday classic It's a Wonderful Life. How Donna Reed transformed into the ideal American woman. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Donna Reed, Hollywood's sweetheart. Donna Reed was much more than your average housewife. There is no dirt on Donna Reed. If you are coming here looking for juicy gossip, you will not find it. The actress is as bright and clean as the kitchen floor on the Donna Reed show. But Reed remains a fascinating role model. From girl next door to pin up to all American mom, she remained a cultural icon. She nabbed an Academy Award in 1953 for her role in From Here to Eternity, and a decade later earned a Golden Globe for Best TV Star. Of course, from 1958 to 1966, she headlined as Donna Stone on The Donna Reed Show. The beauty taught lessons to and solved problems for her picture-perfect family. In the Hollywood of the late 1940s, the name Donna Reed represented the perennial ingenue, a symbol of gentle femininity, just as the name Jimmy Stewart was shorthand for the slightly befuddled but noble American male. It was with Mr. Stewart, in fact, that Miss Reed made one of Hollywood's most lastingly popular films, Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life, released in 1946. In 1953, Donna Reed strayed from her typecasting to play an hostess in a club for soldiers in the 1953 film version of From Here to Eternity. Her performance won her an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actress. But perhaps she is most widely remembered as the star of The Donna Reed Show, which ran as a weekly television comedy series on ABC from 1958 through 1966. On the program, she played the wife of a paediatrician in the small town of Hilldale, who steadily confronted and overcame problems such as measles, poor report cards, teenage dating, and the white lies told by loving spouses. The program, produced by her second husband, Tony Owen, was one of the most successful of many family situation comedies on the air during those years. We have proved on our show that the public really does want to see a healthy woman, not a girl, not a neurotic, not a sex pot. Donna Reed told an interviewer in 1964, I'm so fed up with immature sex and stories about kooky, amoral, sick women. Donna Reed possessed a bold face and charming smile that was envied by all. She was assuredly created for others and not for herself. Being harsh and detrimental was something that was out of her dictionary. Throughout her career, Donna made sure that she has made great discoveries. It wasn't by chance that she turned into a star in the entertainment field. Her creativity and unique spirit became evident from the first day she set her eyes on the prize. Her desire to push herself further allowed her to fathom to greater heights. The journey, motivation, thrill and arrival made her day. In short, Reed was a first decision maker and life mover. Reed was born Donna Bell Mullinger on a farm near Denison, Iowa, the daughter of Hazel Jane Sheaves and William Richard Mullinger. She spent her childhood life in Denison, Iowa. Reed was the eldest sister of five siblings. At 16 years old, she joined Los Angeles City College, and it was here that she received the Campus Queen name. In the process, she appeared in Los Angeles Times' cover page. Her beauty bombarded other executives and entertainment agents. For this reason, she was invited to a film test where she signed a long contract with Feldman Blum Agency. After graduating from Denison High School, Reed planned to become a teacher, but was unable to pay for college. She decided to move to California to attend Los Angeles City College on the advice of her aunt. While attending college, she performed in various stage productions, but had no plans to become an actress. After receiving several offers to screen test for studios, Reed eventually signed with MGM, but insisted on finishing her education first. 
Donna Reed landed her first Hollywood film role quite quickly, a large part in a 1941 B-movie called The Getaway. She was asked to audition by three movie studios. With striking hazel eyes and an easy-going manner, she soon captured a string of starring roles in films that included Calling Dr. Gillespie with Lionel Barrymore, See Here Private Hargrove with Robert Walker, and The Picture of Dorian Gray with Herd Hatfield. Finally, A Less Than Ideal Woman. For years, Reed struggled to break out of the purity role and finally succeeded with the part of Alma, a prostitute who befriended the soldier played by Montgomery Clift in From Here to Eternity. Censorship in the 1950s entertainment industry was inescapable. In From Here to Eternity, Reed's character Lorraine could never be referred to as a sex worker, even though they used a different language back then. Every mention of Lorraine had to describe her as a nightclub hostess. Director Fred Zinnemann didn't want Reed from here to eternity, believing she would not be convincing. But Zinnemann had already battled hard with movie studio boss Harry Cohn to cast his unpopular favourites, Frank Sinatra, Deborah Carr and Montgomery Clift, and Zinnemann knew that Cohn would explode if they butted heads again. Zinnemann reluctantly cast Reed, and to his surprise, her emotionally charged performance blew the director away. Frank Sinatra was not only a legendary singer and the most famous member of the Rat Pack, he was an accomplished actor who starred with Reed in From Here to Eternity. After Reed's death, Sinatra sweetly called her a lovely lady, gentle and kind. Sinatra, who had an infamous rep with the ladies too, added, I can remember in the beginning when every guy, particularly myself, who saw her on the screen had a crush on Donna. Donna Reed was one of those pretty actresses who was blessed by the war. What I meant by that is her wholesome all-American attractiveness came into view at just the moment when so many young Americans were putting on a uniform and going overseas. She was not the only one. She wasn't a famous sultry pin-up like Rita Hayworth or Betty Grable, but she was perfect casting as either the girl you'd left behind or the girl who then decided to follow you. So now we know that the real Donna Reed did her bit, like many other actresses, sending out signed photographs and short notes of good cheer to guys she would never meet. And some of them wrote back to say thank you, or maybe in wild hopes of crazy dreams. There's no hint that anything happened, but Donna Reed kept the letters because she saw them as precious mementos of an age when innocence and slaughter were locked together. In 2009, someone at Reed's former home discovered a shoebox in the garage. It contained at least 341 letters from young American servicemen dating from World War II. Reed had done her part at home, becoming a pen pal to hundreds of young men on the front line. The letters are extremely touching, with one boy gushing, you are a typical American girl, someone who we would like to come home to. We have a war now in the Middle East that has gone on longer than America's involvement in the Second World War, and maybe there are Hollywood people who send letters and glossy photographs signed, good luck. But of course the guys out there have endless digital coverage of their wives and girlfriends now, some of it cheerfully sensual and so they hardly need dreams. You can add that there really aren't people like Donna Reed anymore. Still, the discovery of that shoebox seemed like a revelation of real history, of where we have come from, and of what movies can never mean again. You have to wonder how many times Reed looked at the shoebox and thought of throwing it out. We only know that she kept it. But you have to be an awful cynic to decide that that was because she had forgotten it. Reed's best moment in that spirit was as the nurse, Sandy, in John Ford's They Were Expendable, who has gone to the Asian islands and jungles, and who knows it is her role to watch over the guys, hear their stories and be pretty for them. Donna Reed seemed to understand that task and regard it as a privilege. Just a few years later, she was universally endearing as the wife to Jimmy Stewart in Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. Although the latter was not well received at the time of its release, it forever cemented Reed's image in my mind and that of millions of others, as the small-town girl who captures the heart of George Bailey in Bedford Falls. MGM loaned Donna Reed to Frank Capra 
for the small independent movie that lassoes the moon. The re-evaluation of It's a Wonderful Life boosted Reed's posthumous Hollywood stock, drawing new fans to her signature roles and to an appreciation of her unique blend of beauty, intelligence and unflappable poise. Despite Donna Reed appearing in and delivering great performances opposite superstars Jimmy Stewart, Robert Montgomery and John Wayne in first-rate movies, Reed's career did not benefit as it should have nor did it after Reed made dramatic adventure Green Dolphin Street, directed by Victor Seville in 1947. Here she played opposite Lana Turner and Van Heflin and an impressive supporting cast made up of stalwarts Frank Morgan, May Whitty, Edmund Gwen and Gladys Cooper. When MGM cast Reed in The Bride Goes Wild as her next assignment, she refused it and decided to sit out the rest of her contract at that studio. Donna Reed's first marriage to MGM makeup artist William Bill Tuttle in 1943 ended in divorce after two years. In 1945 she met Hollywood agent Tony Owen and the two fell for each other instantly. They married in June of that year, divorced in 1971. After leaving MGM, Donna concentrated on her growing family. Three children with Owen by 1948 before a fourth child would make up the family. Soon after she signed a long-term contract with Columbia where she made a string of B pictures. It took work for her to get the role she had been waiting for. Reed continued to work steadily throughout the 1950s making a few memorable darker pictures like Phil Carlson's Scandal Sheet in 1952. Ms. Reed tried to get meatier roles, something other than good girl ingenues for years but studio executives had carefully nurtured her good girl image. Reed made a few notable pictures in the 1950s, including Richard Brooks' melodrama The Last Time I Saw Paris, of which I am a big fan, and Valentine Davis's The Benny Goodman Story. But the majority of movies brought to her were more forgettable B pictures. With her disappointment in the movie industry by this time, Donna Reed set her sights on television where she would make her biggest mark and garner the most success. In 1958, Reed turned to television, starring in the aptly named The Donna Reed Show as a wise and loving wife and mother. While it was a return to stereotype for Reed, the sitcom eventually became hugely successful. With The Donna Reed Show, Donna Reed became the wife and mother everybody wanted, as Shelley Fabares. The Donna Stone character helped Reed transition from her former role as favourite sweet small town girl. Although everything always ended hunky-dory on the Donna Reed show, the star played as close to real life as was possible. In other words, she'd got down and dirty when need be. Donna Stone was not always dressed in pearls and perfectly coiffed, which made her all the more admirable. Donna Reed not only acted in the situation comedy, receiving numerous Emmy Award nominations and a Golden Globe win for her portrayal, but she was also active behind the scenes, making sure stories met her standards, with episodes telling half-hour moral stories about family from the show's eight-year run. After the Donna Reed show ended, Reed took a seemingly lengthy break from acting. She appeared in the odd made-for-TV movie, and she took a guest starring Cruz on an episode of The Love Boat. Throughout her life and career, Donna Reed proved as tough and determined as Donna Stone did, only more so. Reed consistently made tough decisions to try to energise her career when the yes-men at the studios wanted to tie her down. Reed also took centre stage on huge world issues, no matter how tough. The beautiful actor had serious spine. Donna Reed's final performance was as Miss Ellie on CBS's primetime soap Dallas, appearing in 24 episodes in the 1984-85 season. Reed replaced Barbara Belgueres in the show after the original Miss Ellie left due to heart surgery. After Barbara Belgueres recovered, she was rehired to play Miss Ellie, which meant the show broke Donna Reed's three-year contract. Reed sued and accepted a $1 million settlement. Donna Reed died of pancreatic cancer in 1986, not long after her Dallas appearances. She was only 64, 
Her children, Penny, Tony, Timothy and Mary Owen, and her third husband, retired Army Colonel Grover Asmus, survived Reed. Grover Asmus established the Donna Reed Foundation for the Performing Arts in her honour. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Donna Reed? She was so much more than an average housewife.